Electric traction is the most efficient way of hauling trains. It's capable of dealing with heavy loads at high speeds with magnificent acceleration, taking steep climbs in its stride. Britain has had electrified lines for many years, mainly in densely populated areas where frequent stopping and starting make acceleration important for maintaining good overall speeds, and on some short main lines like the Manchester Sheffield Wath line with its stiff gradients over the Pennines. Nearly all of these that drew their supply from overhead equipment use direct current at 1500 volts. France too had started to electrify her main lines using DC at a similar voltage. Then as an experiment her engineers tried using a 25,000 volt AC supply, first with AC motors, then DC motors with rectifiers installed on the locomotives. The experiment was a success. The system was cheaper because it needed less feeder equipment, the overhead wire could be thinner, saving copper, and because of this the supporting structures could be lighter, saving steel. So Britain decided to follow suit when electrification of more main lines was under consideration as part of the modernization plan for British railways. The first to be chosen were the old London and North Western routes between London and Liverpool and Manchester, the busiest line in the country where the demand for higher speeds and increased traffic was greatest. After working trials of the prototype locomotives on the first electrified sections to be completed from the designs on trial, one standard specification was evolved. Some are built in British Railways Doncaster Works with electric gear by a number of contractors. Others are wholly built by contractors. In the locomotives are installed the big transformers and the rectifiers to bring the 25 kV AC supply from the grid to a working voltage of around 900 volts DC for the traction motors. At Derby Works, the new electric multiple unit stock is being built. These are the trains that are to be used for commuter services with a top speed of 75 miles an hour. On the 25th of October, 1965, the last section into Euston was energised. On the 3rd of January 1966, regular services began from London all the way to Manchester and Liverpool. In 1966, faster timings with the introduction of the new timetable on the 18th of April and completion of the remainder of the lines to be electrified in the network. To Coventry, to Birmingham where New Street and Snow Hill stations are being combined, thence to Stafford, and up through the five towns to Macclesfield. For about a century, trains between Crewe and Glasgow were worked by steam locomotives. Then for another quarter century by diesels. In February 1970, authority was given to electrify from Weaver Junction to Glasgow Central at 25 kilovolts. Authority to carry the wires over the border. The construction system was based on a series of works trains. A train to make the holes, a train to mix and pour the concrete, a train and a crane to erect the masts. 10,000 line-side holes were surveyed, sited and excavated between Glasgow and Gretna. 11,026 holes between Weaver Junction and Gretna. What time's the tea coming out there? See? You ain't got no time for tea.
At Crew Works, the Class 87 locomotives are coming together. With careful procedures, accurate planning, precise instructions, skill, local knowledge, and native wit, the people who had constructed the electrification for the railway now gave it life. The electric control rooms of Crew and Cathcart took command. Ready to close ELLM. Right, John.
city makes the going easy. We're getting there.